Peace, it's Equality Fragrances coming to you from Prince George's County, Maryland. Welcome to my cipher. A cipher is a person, place, a thing within my circumference to understand it. I'm a cipher. It's peace. For all those new to the channel and those who have been supporting me since day one, I humbly appreciate all your support. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be notified when I drop some new videos. The like button and all of that goes a long way in helping the channel grow and it costs you nothing. With that being said, come on in, sit down, and let's build. Today, I'm going to be giving you my top 10 niche fragrances that I look forward to wearing spring 2021. Y'all been asking for it, so I'm going to give it to you. Um, I'm going to try to make these videos quick, a little bit shorter, but to even do these fragrances justice, it takes more than really a minute to really give them any kind of justice. Anyway, you know how I do. I'm going to give you two honorable mentions and, um, and a top 10. Let's start the show. Honorable mention number one comes from the house of Alexandria Fragrances. If your first time watching my video, Alexandria Fragrances is a clone house. They make fragrances that smell like other fragrance, but they also have original creations. The fragrance they are cloning is from the house of Le Labo, and that's De Noir 29, and this is their version, Mystere 29. Now, what you get here, you got some figs, some bay leaf, some hay, some bergamot, to really describe this, because all those create this accord, this tea accord. No tea is listed, but you get this black tea kind of feel with this fragrance. So I would really consider this fragrance a tea scent. Very just energizing, feel good. You can never go wrong with a tea scent in the springtime or the summer, but definitely in spring. So my honorable mention number one is Mystere 29 from Alexandria Fragrances. Honorable mention number two comes from the house of Byredo. It is my favorite Byredo fragrance from the house. It doesn't have performance issues. And this is Oud Immortale. Now, this fragrance, people have compared this to Creed Aventus. Um, I vehemently disagree with that. But I do understand why people say that. Because, and if you was going to compare it to Creed Aventus, it would be like a really smoky batch of Creed Aventus. This is extremely masculine. It is wood deep. It has oak moss, tobacco, oud, patchouli. So it's, it's just woody all the way. But up top, you get some smoke from the incense. And you have, and the sweetness comes from this candy-like limoncello accord up top. What does the limo cello smell like? If you ever had lemon heads as a kid or even as an adult from the candy store, it has that, that's what it smells like. It smells like it tastes like lemon heads on top of a lot of smoky woodiness. A great scent, a great transitional fragrance. If I had did a fall list, this would have made my fall list. Outstanding fragrance. Um, and that's Oud Immortale from Byredo. Coming in at number 10 is a fragrance I think every man needs to have within their collection or this style of fragrance within their collection. This style is very masculine, professional, mature, and versatile. Any season you can wear this because you're going to be indoors, great for a work scent. And that's from the house of Hubagon, and that's Fougere Royale. If you love a Fougere fragrance, this is the blueprint because this house was the first house to ever come out with a Fougere. So all Fougeres have followed this DNA. Of course, it's aromatic, green. It has that has to have that oak moss and tonka bean in the base, right? And has some floral aspects to it. Very good fragrance. Longevity-wise, eh, I get about four to five and a half hours, give or take. But that's all I need nine times out of ten. Um, if you're going to wear it as a work scent, you at work for eight or ten hours, just reapply. What is a Fougere scent? If you just came across my channel or just getting in the frag home, we call that a barbershop scent. So when you get your hair cut and they put the alcohol on your face, that smell you get from the lavender is green, it's floral, it's woody. That's what this is. So, Fougere Royale at number 10. And number nine comes from the house of Wilhelm Perfumery, and that is Morning Chest. Timmy over at Madden Sense was the first person really bring this to Fragcom, in my most humble opinion, on the first person I heard talking about it. What you get here is a nice Creed Aventus, Hashavat, Cedrop Boys, um, 
in fragrances like that, you get that kind of DNA, that Aventus style of fragrance. But all of those fragrances go in their own different directions. With this one, you get this nice, ripe, juicy green bergamot experience. Absolutely fruity. I feel like I'm getting some other fruits in here. Maybe that apple, but that could just be my mind playing tricks on me because I know Aventus also use apple. But I feel like I'm getting that experience here. You get a nice, smooth leather cord in here. Very smooth. It does not overly dark, just smooth, and you get some ambergris. So you get this woody, green, leathery, fruity experience within this composition. I'm getting about seven hours, seven and a half hours on this, me personally, but... We'll see what it does in the summer. I have yet to wear this in the summertime. Um, it's one of my most latest recent pickups. I think I picked this up last fall. Other than that, that's Morning Chest from Van Heine Perfumery. Coming in number eight is a fragrance I discussed about last year, Agnosium. I did a full review on it. Check it out. This fragrance is spring in a bottle. One of the best veteran fragrances I have ever put my nose on, but you must be a lover of veteran fragrances. Very mature fragrance. Um, is it masculine or feminine? Uh, depends on if you're a woman who like really, really green, earthy fragrances. This is from the house of Monteith Olfactor, and this is Vey 2 Divert. This will always make my spring list as long as I have a bottle. Every morning, I would smell a nozzle of this last year. Every morning. It just, it's like waking up and smelling the grass, the soil. I call this AKA Home Depot. It just, you can smell as green, as grassy, as soily, as woody, bright citruses that gives you like that clean wilderness air kind of feel to it. Very good. You might say, why do I want soil on my skin? I smell like I'm smelling like soil. Trust me, you ain't gonna smell like that when it's popping off your skin outstanding fragrance very mature masculine scent and that's ve to divert coming in number seven is a fragrance i just recently did a full review on check it out this has just been a pleasure to test and wear i really love this is this is one of my top five mansers within my collection and that is vetiver sensual my goodness a smorgasbord of citrus is up top your main ones you get is lime and a juicy tart bergamot on top of mint, which creates this mojito accord to me. It's very woody with the vetiver and I believe some patchouli, maybe some oak moss in there. And it has this soapy quality to it, which comes from the musk. This is just clean, easy to wear fragrance. Check out my full review if you want to know more. And that's Vetiver Sensual from Mansur. Coming in number six comes from the house of Alexandria Fragrances, and that is Black Panther. This is their clone of Bagari's Tiger. Now, Bagari's Tiger is an outstanding summer, spring fragrance. It's going to bang, but it is way overpriced. I personally wouldn't pay over $215 for that fragrance. That's what I would do. What you get is a simplistic note breakdown and it's a fairly linear fragrance. You get a nice juicy tart grapefruit. You get some salty woody nuances with the ambroxin and woody notes. That's it. That's what you get. Grapefruit, salty, woody, ambroxin. That's what you get throughout the life of the fragrance. This smells exactly like it and can be purchased for $45 for like a 30 ml. You cannot beat it. You cannot go wrong with it. Number six, Black Panther from Alexandra Fragrance. Coming in number five comes from the house of BDK, and that is Gris Chardonnay. This is an outstanding unisex scent. Perfect for the spring because that cardamom is sweet and is green along with that black tea. But the note that really stands out to me in this is the sandalwood. So you're getting creamy, almost milky sandalwood. The tonka bean is adding to the milkiness because it's a little bit vanillic. It's black tea and green with the cardamom. It has iris in this, but the iris really doesn't stand out to me for me to even really remotely mention it. It's there, but 
how you were experiencing it outside of analyzing it, you're really not going to pick up that much on what you're going to get the most of is fig, black tea, green, sweet, spicy cardamom, and a lot of creamy, milky sandalwood. That's how I would describe this fragrance. Outstanding spring fragrance, and that is Gris Charnel from BDK. Coming in number four comes from the house of Mansara, and this is Mansara Pearl. Now, this fragrance got hit with the equality effect. What is that? Where for years, this fragrance was sitting on disc counters, not being touched. I got it. I reviewed it. You can't find it nowhere else. Can't find it. Not even on disc counters. It's, when it shows up, it's sold out immediately. When I tell you this is a performance monster and a fig bomb, it absolutely is. Check out my full review for the details, but I'm going to tell you this. I do not care. If you are in Chicago, standing by Lake Michigan, it is 20 below, and Jesse Smollett is out getting Subway, they will smell your siage. Listen, I don't care if you buy it or not. I don't care if you buy any of these. This is I pay for everything I own. Um, So... I don't get kickback from it or the hype. Man, Sarah probably should cut me a check, but they don't. But I'm telling you, this just bangs. Do what you want to do. Man, Sarah Pearl. Coming in, number three is the 2020 release. This fragrance, I was one of the first people on the internet to talk about this fragrance. When I first put my nose on it, I said this is one of the best pineapple fragrances I've ever put my nose on. Period. I am not part of the giveaway team. I do not have affiliate links. I pay for this with my own money. The company has never reached out to me. That's my disclaimer. This is coming from the House of Kajal, and that's Lamar. This is a floral, fruity fragrance. People can say, well, eh, it kind of has an adventurous vibe. I mean, if I was to simplify it and really dumb it down, I would say like a really fruity at a papura, a vintage-ish with a lot of rose turned up. Because what you get is a ripe, juicy, succulent pineapple. I mean, the kind of pineapple that drips, that's really, really sweet. Maybe some strawberries and some raspberries. On top, a beautiful bouquet of roses. Vanilla in the base that adds to the creaminess and the sweetness of that frugal, floral, yogurt co type of concoction. And some woodiness. A absolute to die for fragrance. Hot weather? Just know spring and summer, this is going to be on the list somewhere. It, it just, it just is. Um, This is, yeah, this is almost perfection to me in the bottle. Um, I love this fragrance. I don't just like it. I absolutely love this fragrance. Highly complimented on top of that. That's Kajal Lamar at number three. Coming in at number two is a fragrance I said was better than the other release from the house. Most reviewers say it and eh, ain't really like it that much. I'm telling you, every woman I have let smelt this has wanted to buy this fragrance. I have not found a woman who did not like the smell of this fragrance. This fragrance is brunch in a bottle. What do I mean by brunch? No, brunch is not going to AHA, Cracker Barrel, and getting you some food in the middle of the day. No, sir. In the Washington, D.C. area, where women outnumber men like 10 to 1, it's a smorgasbord of women dressed like you're going to a club, having endless mimosas, smelling good, looking good. A DJ might be playing. Brunch is like a religious thing here. It is like a day party. Roses on ice from the House of Killian. Nothing else to say about this. This smells exactly like Hendrix Gin. Exactly like it. With the infused rose, the cucumber, and this little bit of musk to add some clean cleanliness to it. Like soapiness to it. Listen, people, I'm telling you, hot weather, this going to bang out. That's Rose on Ice from Killian. Coming in at number one, a minute or so that I have to talk about this fragrance isn't going to do it any justice. It needs its own review. This is one of the most exotic 
and captivating hot weather fragrances I have ever put my nose on. When my guy Hanif put me on to this house, I've been on it ever since. A lot of people don't talk about this fragrance, and I don't know why. Well, maybe because a lot of people ain't getting free bottles. This is coming from the house of Raymond Montegal, and this is La Isla Blanca from the Ibiza line. When I'm telling you, don't read the notes from Fragranica. Don't be like, oh, let me see what the notes are. The notes will not even remotely describe the old fact of journey you're gonna go on when you wear this fragrance. When you first spray it on, this is gonna be my scent of the day. Oh, you get all these citruses, a lot of them like tropical citruses. That's very fizzy because it has ginger and anise in there. So it's spicy and, and, and fizzy, which comes from the, those two notes. It's ozonic. You have a nice marine accord that just is transportive throughout the life of the fragrance. I don't know. Ambroxan is enlisted, and I don't know if that comes from Ambroxan, but it's a little salty, a little like ocean sea salty. And some florals. This is white t-shirt in a bottle. I do not care what you are wearing. When I walk into a room wearing this and you smell me, you're gonna stop talking mid-sentence and say, damn, you're gonna do it. You're gonna stop talking mid-sentence, you just are. This is tropical. As it dries down, I start getting a little bit of like coconut fruits. Do not even remotely come in here and mention Virgin Island water. It cannot even carry this fragrance jockstrap. Don't do it, don't waste your time. I don't care what batch you're gonna talk about, it's not even remotely close. One of the best hot weather fragrances, white t-shirt approved. What is hot white t-shirt? Like when you're out with a white t-shirt, you can wear it casually dressed up first date. It does not matter, you're gonna bang out. That's all I can say about this fragrance. I went on too long, I'll give you a full review. That's La Isla Blanca from Raymond Montigal. So, that was my top 10 spring fragrances I look forward to wearing 2021. These fragrances bang out. If you have any of these fragrances, leave your comment down below. Let people know what you think of these fragrances. Everything is worth a sample. Do not blind buy anything. Sample it. I don't care how excited I am for the fragrance. That's my taste and that's me. Have your own taste. Learn what you like. Other than that, I truly appreciate the love and support. I have a lot of content to drop out. I was a little quiet this week. I'm going to pick it back up um, next week and going forward. Anything else, don't forget to hit me on IG if you have any questions. I'm going to leave you the way I greeted you. And that's in the universal language of peace.